We've talked a lot about your father's career. Now I'd like to talk about your career, and I know a lot of the people that are going to be listening to this are very curious about your show, Bewitched, and how it came about. Bill Asher and I took a property to um, Columbia and Harry Ackerman, and to make a long story short, said, well, I'm not sure, and in the meantime, gave a script to Bill to read, and said, if you like this, why don't you let Lizzie take a look at it. Why don't you let her read it? So he read it, handed it to me, and I saw Once Upon a Time, and I said, I love it. He said, aren't you going to finish it? I said, oh, yeah, it might be a good idea. <laughs> so I did, we did, there, there it was, eight years. You know. Any comments from your father about it? I think he enjoyed it. He really, I think he did. I, I hope, in a way, just being bitchy, I really hope he kind of was sorry that he didn't narrate the first one. He never, he never said he was, and uh, he came out to visit the set a couple of times. And at one point, uh, his name came up for Daddy, and I thought that was too close to home. No, I didn't think that was right. And so we got Morris Evans instead, who was, who was really perfect. I mean, it would have been fun, but he wasn't very well at that point, though. And, and then, he, then he got all right again, but I mean, he'd been, he'd been uh, slightly ill before then but um, it would it, that would have been fun I would have liked that did you ever see I Married a Witch the movie that supposedly not until after uh, Bewitched was on the air I never saw it up until after that I don't think it has anything to do with what we did does it only in the sense that this guy marries a witch yeah I wondered if anybody had ever uh, brought up that, that. no but Bewitch was actually a terrific experience for me. I learned so much, and there is so much to learn. I mean, it was like going to college for me for eight years. It was fabulous, just fabulous. I mean, it was like, um, there's the, well, there was never a moment when I wasn't on the set, either as Samantha or Serena or myself. And what, it, what was really nice about it was when you're working closely with people and you've got a really good crew they, they're not the least bit hesitant to explain what they're doing to you if you'll just ask them because they're good and they're proud of what they do you know so I learned a lot about special effects obviously but a lot about lighting a lot about sound a lot about camera a lot about it and it's that kind of stuff that you absorb and and you learn from people that are good and you watch and you listen and there was not one moment in eight years and I know this is gonna sound more Pollyanna than Pollyanna herself but there was not one moment in eight years that I was bored not once not once I found it totally fascinating every day of it and I don't think there was a day that I had off either mm. I have to ask you this I hate to <laughs> how many times a day do people ask you if they see you in public to wiggle your nose well it depends on how many people I run into during the day, I guess. <laughs> no, they? they do, yeah. They do, they do. They ask. And uh, What do you do? Do it. You do? Oh, sure. Well, there's sometimes when I don't, actually. It depends on how it's asked. I mean, there have been a couple of people I've gone, oh, no, you know, in my head I've gone, oh, no, I don't think so. Not with this guy or not with that person or whatever. I don't think that's a good idea. But... Ordinarily, it doesn't bother me. I think it's kind of fun. And, you know, little kids get a big kick out of it. And um, I know, well, when I was working, one thing I could never do is, is even if I had like a glass of wine, I couldn't do it. So if I'd wanted to get sloshed on the set, I would never have been able to do that because I never would have been able to twitch had I been, in, you know, into the, into the wine bottle. So I can't do it. If I'm tired or if I've had a glass of wine, I can't do it. Isn't that funny? It's weird. Where did the bit come from? Was it in the original well, concept? What well, no. What happened was is, you know, all this finger pointing and zapping and that kind of stuff and arm waving that went on. We're trying to figure out something to do that would be a little bit more interesting than that. And Asher said, Well you remember that thing that when you get perturbed that you do with your you know, with your I said, What? He said, well, you know that funny thing you do? I said, what funny thing? And he thought I was just being arbitrary because I didn't want to do it. I said, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. He said, you don't? And I said, no. I said, look, the next time I do something weird like that, would you let me know? And he said, yes. And so at one point, I guess, I don't know when it was, later, he said, that's it. I said, 
wait a minute you mean I did like something like that and he said yeah so that's where it came from <laughs> just like that yeah so that's where we just did that then the only time well not the only time but one time I had a problem with it was when this woman with this child came up to me and was saying you know if you don't uh, oh she said uh, you haven't been a good girl today and you, you come here and say hi. and I heard this commotion going on and I turned around and she said you say hello to Samantha or she'll twitch and turn you into a toad and I said how dare this child was terrified screaming no 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 because her mother had been threatening her for weeks if she wasn't going to behave herself she was going to find me and have me turn her into a toad or something and this poor little thing I was furious I said how dare you do this to this poor child screaming and yelling hiding behind her mother terrified of me I don't blame her well, you were working with some terrific people. Ah, oh, Miss Moorhead. Absolutely. Well, I found her in Bloomingdale's that I don't shop in anymore because they sell ivory, so I gave up that <laughs> indulgence. But I did. I found... It was funny because we were in New York and I heard, oh, well, I think that will do. And I thought, oh, my God, who's that voice? And I turned around and I saw this mad-looking woman with red hair with pink tulle wrapped around it. I mean, she looked like an, an oversized thing of cotton candy. I mean, absolutely extraordinary. And I looked at her and I said, excuse me, are you... She said, yes, Agnes Moorhead. I went, oh, yes, of course, because I wasn't sure. And I thought, am I going to just stumble over, are you... You know, who am I going to say? And I said, would you be interested in doing a series? She said, no. I said, no. And she said, well, maybe I don't know why. And I said, well, I'm Elizabeth Montgomery. She said, oh, really? I mean... I, wasn't trying to impress her because nobody would have been impressed anyway so I just said well okay as long as you sort of said yes and I went running back to the hotel saying I found mother I found mother and Bill said where was she I thought she was up in the country I said no 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 I mean mother not mom <laughs> Jenny said oh you mean Andorra or what her name wasn't Andorra at that point I don't remember what her name was. And I said, yes, so luckily she said she'd do it. But she told me later, she said that she accepted it because she was sure it was going to be a flop. I said, well, how dare you? <laughs> but she said, oh, no. I, she said, I couldn't imagine anybody being interested in witches. She said, of course, my character was fascinating. I said, yes, Aggie, that's right, it was. And here you are now, bit, bitching and moaning. Eight years later, you're still complaining about it. Isn't it awful? And she was wonderful. I loved her. And uh, so that's it. Well, that's how she got the job anyway. And then she was the one that picked the name for Andorra. And Samantha's original name was Cassandra, which I hated because mm -hmm. of that, you know, doom and gloom nonsense. And I said, ooh, you know, icky, let's change that. And they said, why don't we call her Elizabeth? I said, why don't we not call her Elizabeth? <laughs> I always find that real distracting, playing characters with your, with own, your own name. name. I wouldn't like that. You, you were surrounded with terrific people on that show. You had Agnes Moorhead, who Orson Welles called the greatest actor I have ever known. He never referred to her as an actress. He always said she is the greatest actor I've ever known. That's great. That's great. That's really great. No, I mean, we made a point of always trying to get the really the best, best people, even for little teeny wee parts, because you can't do it by yourself. I mean, you're not out there in a vacuum. And if you don't have good people around you, it's just, you know, it doesn't work. Do you watch them now, that they're being rebroadcast? Do you ever watch them? Sometimes. I, I like the ones with Serena. Because <laughs> I, I finally ended up inventing her because I must admit I got a little tired of being adorable all the time. <laughs> so Serena was born. How active were you in story development for your show? Actually, there were people around, like like producers and, and Bill and people like that, that would come up, you know, with ideas. I certainly had input, you know, but I can't say they were all mine. I mean, every once in a while I'd come up and say, oh, why don't we, you know. But uh, there were too many talented people around for me to be the one that, you know, did that. But I did once, you know, I did have input as far as dialogue and stuff was concerned. Do you have a favorite episode? Do I? Yes. Well, yes. Um, I love the Christmas one with with the polka dots with the little black girl and, and Tabitha when Tabitha got the black polka dots and she got the white oh. ones I thought that was kind of neat and actually um, that one if memory serves was the one that Jefferson, the Jefferson High School kids helped write 
and they loved the show and they would come on to the set she'd bring them on and finally they said well can we write one and I said sure go ahead so they came up with the idea and they wrote the script and you know we helped them with it but I mean they did it what about Marianne Lauren what a fabulous woman oh what a fabulous woman I mean I adored her and she was quite like that but she was much sharper than that I mean truly and she kept reminding me that she knew me before I was born because she was in Lake Como with mom and dad when mom found out she was pregnant with me and it wasn't me at all it was an older sister that I had that died but everybody figured it was me so she figured it was me too uh-huh. and she, I just adored her and one day she called me she was staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel in this little room that she loved it was half the size of this but she liked it because she got her little nest and everything and she called me up one night and said, oh, 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 you, oh, oh, you must come, come, come. Oh, my God. I said, what's the matter, Mary? Are you all right? She said, yep, yep, yes. She said, you must come come down at, at, at once. I said, well, what's the matter? She said, I have, I have to show you something. She don't tell anybody. I have to show you something. I said, okay. So I went roaring down to the hotel. And she said, what, what, watch. I can, I, I, I can do it. I, I can do it. Watch this. She's sitting in front of the television set. And she went, now, now watch. And she raised her hand like this. And she went. Bam! And she pointed at the television set, and it changed channels. And I went, my God, Mary, I don't believe this. I said, it's really rubbed off on you. I said, do that again. She said, oh, what, what, well, you just, she said, I've had everybody, every, every, everybody, everybody's in here been wa- wa- watching me do this, and this, wa- oh, heaven. I said, yes. Yeah. So she went, bam! And it changed channels again. And I went, oh, no. She had on two bracelets that when she went like this, would clank together and make the same frequency as the video changer. And she thought she was doing it herself, and I never had the heart to tell her that she hadn't done it. Oh, she was so excited. So she always got that room and changed her television by throwing her hand at it. And I guess she wore those bracelets all the time. Alice Pierce. What an incredible lady she was. God, what a neat, neat person. And she worked so hard. I think she worked up until about two weeks before she died. It was amazing, just amazing. And, you know, we all knew how sick she was, and she was just there plugging away all the time. I think, actually, it helped her to have it to go to. And I think she was afraid when she had to start wearing the wig and all that kind of stuff that people would, you know... Well, I know she said to me one time, she said, Oh, Lizzie, she said, I I don't know, I look so terrible. Do you think, you know, it's... I said, Don't you ever worry about that. I said, You don't look terrible. You look just fine. And I said, even if you did look terrible, you're acting so good, who cares? You know, I mean, it was one of those things. She's just just a wonderful, wonderful woman. So it, it was very sad to lose her. And the situation with, with um, Darren, I would think, would be very... Well, that, that seemed, no, that seemed to, that transition worked really well. It really did. I mean, I, I the audiences seemed to accept it, and... and uh, Dick Sargent took over very well indeed, mm-hmm. and he was wonderful. So you know it, that was not a problem. I mean, it was you know it was it was a shame that the situation arose, but those things happen, and it just this the whole transition was very smooth indeed. And and Dick's a super guy, you know, and, and it must have been very difficult. It was difficult for him, I know, but he handled it beautifully. I thought. <laughs> 